Dun, da, da, dun, 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 dun. Welcome, everybody. A very happy Saturday to all. Thank you for joining us today. Also, a, um, a very, very happy Hogan to all of you out there. A happy Gilmore for those who celebrate. And also a very special happy kind to all your mirth makers out there in Fernwood. So today we are, we are doing a specialized, uh, another specialized uh, trippy food uh, live stream episode. That one is, bear with me one second. That one is our Korean, um, what do we call this one? We call it Shop Smart, Shop H Mart. Uh, there's a reference right there for anybody who didn't get that. Um, today we are, um, we're going to enjoy a beverage and snacks specifically from H Mart. Now, um, most of you probably have an H Mart nearby. Uh, it is a Korean based grocery chain. Um, and they're all over the place. Uh, if you go back and watch the um, kimchi episode that uh, that I filmed with Julie Couture in Massachusetts, we got the uh, the different kimchis from H Mart. If you're a fan of kimchi, you will love H Mart because they have like dozens and dozens of different kinds of kimchi. I highly recommend it. So today, everything that we have. Let me make sure that's actually correct. Yes, it is correct. Everything that we have was purchased at our local H Mart. So let's see, what did I miss? Make it a session. So, okay, so uh, there's some discussion about making a kumquat beer. So we'll let the discussion go. Um, okay, everybody's kind of going back and forth. So far, I see three people in the room. I see uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado, which doesn't surprise me at all. I see Janice, uh, who has perfect attendance and needs that little star because she has perfect attendance for uh, Trippy Food live streams. And we have Stoner Kitchen, who's actually a little bit early. Usually he comes in a little bit later. So um, welcome, Stoner. Hope you have a great week. Hope you all have a great week next week. And uh, and welcome to the live stream. So I'm just going to wait. Uh, let's see. It, it shows that there's five people in the room. Now, maybe it's because the weather's getting warmer, maybe because more people are getting out. Um, and doing things that we have a uh, lower turnout, but we'll wait till we get a few people. Hey, John King is in the room. All right. Well, welcome, John King. Good to see you again. Uh, so we'll wait a few minutes. Um, maybe we'll give it till quarter after till we get some more people in the room. I, it's really hard to tell. I'm going by that little number thing up there, and it says seven. But I'm seeing. Let's see. I'm, I'm only seeing like four people in the chat. It just it might mean that there's other people. Ah, that seven went down to six. Um, now, now it's back up to seven again. So it may mean that some people are watching, but not necessarily participating in the chat. So I'll wait till that maybe maybe till that number gets up to ten, or till uh, we'll give it till ten after. We'll give it to ten after one, because I don't know I don't know if we started early, according to the little clock here. We started on time. So, but everything we're doing, not necessarily uh, Korean products, but uh, available at that Korean market. Uh, I think for the most part they are. Uh, with the exception of one of these, which I think uh, is made in the U.S., but uh, everything else, um, and, and um, some, and a couple of things that are made on site, but they are Korean products. So, I am doing fine, John King. Thank you for asking. And yourself, how are you doing? Let's see. Do I have anything? No. Okay. So. Uh, there is a possible a possibility that we will throw something in there that is not necessarily Korean or from the Korean market or from H Mart, but we will do it because it is something that Grub Warp has been asking us about, and we will do that live if uh, if Grub shows up. So, I grew up eating kimchi. I didn't grow up eating it, but um, but my first introduction to it, I loved it. So I've been eating it since I was introduced to it. So I would say. I'm trying to think of how long I would say it's been since I started eating kimchi. But yeah, there's so many different varieties. And that's what there's like a white kimchi, there's a radish kimchi. Um, there's so many different. I mean, your basic kimchi is, if I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Napa cabbage. And um, and what they do is they rub this paste on it. And the paste is a ferment. It, it, I don't think it's, I don't think they ferment the paste, but the paste is made with uh, chilies. It's made with salt, a lot of salt. Um, usually they add some sort of fish to it. Um, I, I did attend, um, a, um, a class on how to make some, uh, make kimchi and they gave you this little jar. You took it home with you and put it in your refrigerator for, they say 30 days. And then you have an, you have effectively have a kimchi. Traditionally kimchi is, um, 
like in Korea, they would put it in a clay pot and they would bury it in the ground over, over the winter. And so it would have a chance to ferment underground. And then in the spring, they would dig it out and, uh, and they would enjoy it. So the fermentation prevents it from going bad. Um, but, uh, but that's how a, a kimchi was originally made. And so you had like six, uh, like two month kimchi and six month kimchi, yada, yada, yada. Um, they have very, very special refrigerators to make kimchi now that um, are very, very expensive. But, uh, but you know, kimchi is your thing. You buy one of those very, very expensive kimchi refrigerators. I think, I think like it has to be kept at a very certain temperature for a long period of time and everything it could be very expensive. So. I am not seeing a lot of responses in the chat or any more in the chat, so I'm just checking to make sure that you guys are still out there. So please uh, just say here or present or raise your hand. Won't be able to see it, but you know, go ahead and do that just to make sure that everybody is still in the room and you can still hear me and we haven't locked it up. I prefer it fresh. The ferment it can be a bit strong. It can be, and especially depending on what you're using to ferment it. Like if you're putting crab in there, or you're putting like those little little, little tiny baby fish in there, it can be uh, very strong. So, um, so some some kimchi is made without that, and I think that's probably like a fresh kimchi. Like it was just freshly made, and you just go ahead and eat it like that. Um, the benefit of uh, doing a fresh kimchi, or eating a French kimchi, French fresh a fresh kimchi is that the um the napa cabbage is still going to have some crispness to it because over a period of time as it ferments the the napa cabbage gets kind of wilt wilted i guess is like a i guess is one term you could say for it kind of wilted so oh thank you janice and uh, tom i'm glad you are here still and i'm glad you can hear me and see me how is the audio how is the uh video everything okay when we had we had a, a run of bad luck there for a while but but hopefully we're uh, we're better now and hopefully We'll get past that. So I've I've killed a lot of things on the PC that um, that might have been using up resources. I uh, took every other device in in the house off the network um, for this. So hopefully hopefully we'll be okay. We'll be good. I'm fermenting some pineapple for another batch of tapachi. Well, that sounds interesting. I don't think I've ever had that. So okay, we are loud and clear. So we are at 107. We'll, we'll at least get started in the review because, you know, anyone who misses the review will be able to actually be able to see it as we go through it. But I'll start the review at uh, at 10 after. See how long that goes. Oh, what did I do with our cards? We don't have our You know what? So instead, I, I, I have trivia questions to read because we're getting back to it. We As you notice, we finished all of, of the What's on Val shelves, uh, which allowed me to kind of rearrange the shelves a little bit neater, a little bit better, but um, but still, they need some work. We still got to figure out what to do with it. Um, but we're back on a usual schedule, so that involves our cards. And I can't find our or reading the trivia cards, pretending to read the trivia cards since they're all done. I can't find the cards, so we're just going to read the trivia questions. We're going to forego the cards. It'll be fine. You know, that way we don't have to do the back burner thing and everything else like that and everything. If that's okay with you guys, unless you would like to to continue the pretense. Of, um, of reading up the cards. And I, I will certainly do that. I will try to find the cards. I think I know where they are. Um, severe thunderstorm watch here again. John, you get a lot of severe thunderstorm watches. Are you in that, are you in that like swath of, uh, it, John, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you were in like New Braunfels. Is that right? Uh, you're in the New Braunfels area. Um, so it's like kind of like the middle of Texas. There's always that, you know, you get tornadoes, you get uh, a lot of severe thunderstorms and everything. But um, I miss thunderstorms. I enjoy them. I don't want to die in them. I don't want uh, damage uh, from them and everything. But I enjoy um, listening to them and watching them, lightning and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. I, I like it. Uh, I, I have since I was a kid. I don't know, just crazy like that. Um, so I'm throwing it out to you guys, the cards, or just forget about the cards. What say ye? Thumbs up, thumbs in the middle, thumbs down. The cards? Let me know. Uh, we will certainly do that. Uh, we have a minute left, and then we will get started. I have uh, Doodle is just chilling down here. Um, I do have his snacks here. Uh, I assume once I start once I start opening snacks, he's going to want something. So I have his snacks here. We don't need the cards. But then Tom says cards. Okay, so that's one and one. I need a tiebreaker. Anybody? John King, Stoner Kitchen, a tiebreaker here. I need you to vote. 
I need you to make your voices heard. And we are at 110. So we are going to one more, one more. Anybody, John King, Stoner Kitchen. John King says cards. That's two cards, one. No, we don't need the cards. Stoner, you want to break this tie or do you want or do you want to make it a tie again? I mean, I'm sorry, not break the tie, but you want to make it um, a majority? Stoner? Oh, maybe he's busy fermenting his pineapple. So, all right, so that's two for the cards, one against the cards. Let me see if I can find the cards. One second. I know, Doodle. We're going to have snacks in a second. I wish I remember where I put them. I think they might be over here. And no. Why can't I find the cards? All right. You know what? I know you voted for the cards, but I can't find them right now. So what we'll, here's what we'll do. We will do it without the cards today, and then I'll find the cards, and we'll we'll resume that next next week unless you know people have a big problem with it. So there we go. Uh, Doodle's up and uh, Doodle's up and active here. Hang on. Come on, Doodle. Let's come up and say hi. It's Doodle, everybody. Doodle. Doodle in the room. Doodle. Doodle's like, I know you have snacks up here. I'm just trying to figure out where they are. Doodle, say hello. Say hello, Doodle. No? Okay. I'll give you a snack to start with because you you seem like you really want a snack. So I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you a chicken snack, and then you can use a playing card. It won't matter. It won't, but I don't have any. Oh wait a minute. One second. You said that, and then I remembered I had bacon playing cards up there. So I went to look for the bacon playing cards, and look what I found. I found our trivia cards. So we're good. All right. Oh, Doodle's like this. He wants a snack. So, Doodle, yes, you can have a snack because you're a good dog. Or a relatively good dog. Let's put it that way. It almost looks like, like bacon or jerky, but that's chicken. I'm going to give you half a piece, Doodle, because we're going to pace you on this. There you go. You're going to run off with it? Oh, good. You're going you're to stay here. That's nice. All righty, then. Let's get started. So uh, we have, let's see here. Uh, let's start with our beverage. So we have uh, InnoT, uh, and this is uh, bubble tea. Uh, this is an, a little bit unusual because bubble tea typically isn't sold like already with the boba in it and everything, but I guess they figured out a way to do that. You typically, you're gonna, if you're gonna do a bubble tea or a boba tea, you're, gonna, you're going to prepare it when you're gonna drink it. And so they prepare this ahead of time. They do say to shake it up a little bit. It does have the boba in it. And this is taro flavored, um, taro flavored bubble tea. So this sounds really interesting. And we're gonna try that. Um, the thing I, real, I realize is I don't have a boba straw. Now for any of the, you who like boba, realize that you have to have a boba straw. So that's the, when, you're drink, when you're drinking it, uh, it has to be a, a straw that's big enough to fit the tapioca pearls, which are the boba, uh, up into the straw. Now, uh, you can actually see a picture of the straw right there with a boba in it. They do not provide you a straw with this. They should have like like one take, a, you know, a boba straw take to this. Because if you're just buying this and you're like you're on the road or something and you want to just like have a bubble tea and everything, they should, they should like tape a straw to that, stick it in there and just, you know, drink it like that. So I don't have a boba straw. Um, I didn't think to get a boba straw, so I had it improvised. So I had this tube that confetti was in, uh, and I had a plug on both ends. And so I'll put the confetti back in it afterwards, but I'm going to use that today as the boba straw. It is bigger than the uh, opening in the can, so I'm going to pour it in the glass. But then you want to see it anyways, and you want to be able to see the boba and the, the uh, boba tea anyways. So we're going to put it in the glass, and we're going to use our improvised boba straw. Did you get a haircut, Val? Uh, yes and no. So I got a haircut two weeks ago. I think for the last live stream, I, I had my haircut. Um, but um, I just took a shower just before. So it's still like a little bit wet. So as it dries, it'll it'll puff out a little bit. But yes, I did get a haircut. So thank you for noticing, Tom. Uh, doodle for president. I, I don't think 
I have to check the uh, Constitution. I don't remember anything about dogs. The only thing is he's not 35 years old. He's not even 35 in dog years. So um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he can't run. He is U.S. born, however, so, so there is that. Mix it with chocolate. Mix this with chocolate? You mean like chocolate syrup? Mm. I'm going to taste it as is. Um, maybe I will take the leftovers, but I have to go all the way in the kitchen to get the chocolate and everything. I mean, finding the cards, that's one thing. You know, I just have to get up and, and, and find the cards. But to get chocolate, uh, chocolate syrup, I have to go all the way into the kitchen. And, and probably not going to do that today. But, you know, maybe I'll try it afterwards and let you know how it tastes. But uh, thank you for the suggestion, John. Uh, okay, so our first snack is... Uh, I don't know if you can really call this a snack. It's more of a side dish, but this is, uh, as long as we're on the subject of kimchi, dandelion kimchi. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of fluid in there. So I think that's going to be very spicy. But uh, but I just thought this was really interesting. A dandelion kimchi it just sounds really interesting. So that's our first snack, which is like again is a side dish. Also this one. This is uh, seasoned, spice, seasoned sliced squid. I'm expecting that that's going to be a little bit spicy. It almost looks like spaghetti, but uh, but it is in fact squid. That's probably in a like a chili paste or something along those lines. Um, both of these are H Mart brand, so they both of these are made in house. Uh, if you go into an H Mart, usually, uh, especially I think it's on Saturdays. At the front of the store, they have these big tables set up, and there's people on the table, and there's huge bins of these things. I mean, like, you know, basically just bins of those things. And then they have the little plastic containers back there, so you just buy them, and you, they'll just put them in the bins. Um, I went when, you know, when it, when they didn't have that out, and these were just, like, in the back in the refrigerator section and everything. So we're going to try those. Um, they both look very interesting, and I think they're both going to be tasty. That, that's just me. Uh, number three is, oh, okay, this one, which is um, from, I'm going to say this wrong, it's French, uh, Tous les Jours, I think it's Tous les Jours, uh, which is an Asian bakery. I know it doesn't sound like an Asian bakery, but if you think about it, um, the French had a lot of influence in Vietnam, and so a lot of things that were Vietnamese have, certainly have French names um, in Cambodia and, those, uh, and places uh, like that, and this is, um, this is made there, there is a um, uh, Tous les Jours um, on site at H Mart, and that's where we got this. This is a honeydew melon bread. Uh, it's uh, it's made using honeydew melon powder. And if you look deep down inside there, you see a little bit of green in there. So I have a feeling that once we open this up, it's going to kind of be green in the middle and everything. It's a honeydew melon uh, bread. So it sounded interesting. I picked it up, and we're going to eat that. Hey, Amy Cakey in the room. Good to see you again, Amy Cakey. Uh, early, too, because usually you come in a little bit later, but it's nice to see you early. So welcome, Amy Cakey. We haven't started um, eating or drinking anything yet, so you're you're right on time. We're just uh, we're just uh, reviewing our snacks and beverages, so our snacks and beverage. Because as you remember, when we used to do the uh, soft drinks on alternate weeks, when it wasn't a trippy food beer night, um, we would do like, you know, uh, sometimes up to up to three of them, I think. We were like two or three. Um, but um, it just got to be a bit too much, and we didn't always make, uh, you know, we, we, were, we were fine. Fine, we were rushed for time. So I just narrowed it down to one, since we only do, we only do one beer anyways. Every once in a while, we do more than one beer, like if we're doing a um, uh, beer with alcohol in it and then a non-alcoholic beer. So we might do two. but uh, And we might do two soft drinks every once in a while as well. But today, one, just one. Starbucks has a strawberry frappuccino. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about stra the st strawberry and coffee. I guess that would be okay because I sometimes when I get coffee ice cream, I have the mixed strawberries in there. So maybe that flavor would be okay. It's just that, and I stay away from frappuccinos in general just because there's just so much going on there. You have your you have your milk, you have your coffee, you have sugar, you have some sort of syrup. Um, I think sometimes, uh, I think they put a bunch of other things in there, and now they're adding strawberry on top of that. There's just, just so much going on in there. I, like, I prefer uh, I prefer a cappuccino, um, which is basically just coffee and milk. So, um, and here's something that some people might not, might not realize. Um, you have cappuccino and you have latte, right? Now, latte is, if I'm not mistaken, the Italian word for, for milk, the Italian word for milk. So, uh, latte means milk. So, it's mostly milk. 
with some uh, with some coffee in it, with some espresso mixed into it. Uh, whereas a cappuccino is mostly coffee with some milk mixed into it, or mostly uh, espresso with some milk mixed into it. So you get less with a um, you get less with an, with a uh, cappuccino, but you actually get more coffee uh, in the in the cappuccino. So that's kind of how that works. I've always found it a little bit confusing, but that's kind of how that works. But again, strawberry cappuccino just sounds like too much going on, too sweet, too you know a lot of other stuff. Maybe it's worth trying. I don't know. I'll have to check my Starbucks card and see how much I have left on it. Hey, Pudding Power in the room. Well, welcome, Pudding Power. Uh, good to see you again. As a, and Snorkel. Snorkel snuck in as well. Uh, glad I can finally catch a stream. I've been so busy with work. Well, I'm glad you are able to join us as well, um, John King. So a, a, a very happy kind, or a happy kind to you today. Um, cappuccino is milk foam with espresso. Right. Uh, yeah, the process of making it is different too. So macchiato means stain. Literally, means stain. So like, if you spill your macchiato on your uh, on your clothes, they will stain. I imagine if you still spill any coffee drink on your clothes, they will stain. I imagine you could probably, if you want brown clothes, you could probably use uh, coffee or cappuccino to stain them. Uh, let's see, cappuccino is usually frothed milk. I know because I used to work at Boba Time doing espresso and coffee drinks. Oh, cool. Well, uh, snorkel, it is Boba Time today. So we are actually doing Boba. How were the empanadas? The empanadas were awesome. Well, yeah, they were pretty good. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure which empanadas you're referring to. So um, I, I recently had some uh, Colombian empanadas um, off the, what is the name of that? Um, Susa Repas truck. They make their own uh, meat em empanadas, but they're Colombian empanadas, which are smaller. And then um, there's a place called World Empanada that makes uh, Argentinian, Argentinian. I'm not sure exactly, you know, what that um, adjective is. Um, Argentinian um, um, empanadas, which are larger. Uh, I think that sometimes they're fried, but the ones that they make there are baked, and it's like a it's like a pie. I was going to say a meat pie, but not that they don't always have meat in them. They have some vegan ones. They also have some vegetarian ones, um, beans, cheese, a bunch of different things and everything. Really, really good. Now, does it feel like the planet Earth is spinning faster? It's already another Saturday. It feels like we were on here last week. I think the longer you go, the longer you, you spend on the planet, the shorter time seems to go. Uh, I, I don't know why that is, but I, I think maybe, um, maybe you just reference time um, against what you, how much you've already lived. So like someone like me, who's lived 60 years, um, uh, to, for me, another year goes by really fast because I compare it to the last 60. So, so maybe that's what it is. Uh, I, I don't know that it spins faster. I don't know that time goes faster or anything. If it spins faster, our clocks keep up with it. So, you know, uh, it, uh, it does one complete spin in 24 hours. It does one complete trip around the sun, 365 days. I think it still does that, but uh, it just seems faster to us, Sonic. So, but uh, interesting, um, interesting thought, thought, philosophical discussion. Thank you. And Peter Griffin, I, I did, I neglected to welcome you to the room. So welcome, Peter Griffin. Always good to see you. Welcome, uh, John King. I am moving to Detroit next month. That's interesting. Detroit is um, Detroit uh, was especially hard hit by COVID. A lot of people just abandoned their homes. They just walked out of their homes. Um, you know, they've had a rough time and, but uh, apparently Detroit is like going through a renaissance right now, especially because, um, property is really cheap right now. So people are coming in, buying and renovating. Uh, a lot of times, unfortunately, uh, what they're also doing is buying a whole block, tearing it down and building apartments and everything. But there is a renaissance in Detroit. So, um, this might be a good time to move to Detroit. Uh, I don't know if, um, I don't know what the job market is, there is like, but uh, John King, we wish you the best of luck. And there's probably some very interesting and fun things to do in Detroit area, but it's uh, it's going to be a lot different than Texas, a, hell, a heck of a lot different than Texas. Um, uh, I know that, I, I'm trying to think if, if um, I'm trying to think if New Braunfels is, con is still considered hill country, if it's still like above the Balcones Fault. Uh, and it's still considered hill country, but but uh, Detroit and most of Michigan is completely flat. So it'll be fun. Uh, you'll be close to hell, so you can go visit hell, and I recommend that. Uh, and, and and it sounds like I'm joking, but I'm, t I'm totally serious. There's Hell, Michigan is this, this cute little town. 
I, re I highly recommend it. Hey, Drew Horst in the room as well. I worked for Pizza Hut for five years. Um, I only worked for, I don't really want to call it fast food. I worked for a restaurant. Uh, it's actually, it's a ice cream, ice cream parlor sandwich place called Brigham's in Massachusetts when I was younger. Um, uh, but that's my only, my, my only experience working at, in a, in a restaurant or a food place like that. But, uh, sorry for the delayed. Hello. Just got my pastrami in. Ooh, now I got to wait 80 day, 30 days. That sounds interesting. Are you going to smoke it, Tom? Uh, that would be interesting. And I know you have a smoker. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anybody? Sorry, late. Sorry for the late Charles Grodin. God bless him. He was in the movie Clifford with Martin Short. The thing I remember the most about Charles Grodin was, um, uh, well, I don't think it was in Clifford. He was in Beethoven. He was, wasn't it? The big dog was Beethoven. Um, but I remember Charles Grodin from, um, Midnight Run. So he was basically, um, I, I think, um, um, what's, uh, who's the guy? Uh, the guy, you know, the guy, um, Robert De Niro, Robert De Niro was a bounty hunter and he was, he was, look, he was after Charles Grodin. Uh, Charles Grodin was subtle in that movie. Um, uh, De Niro was actually funny in that movie, but that's what I remember Charles Grodin in the most. So yes, um, RIP, uh, Charles Grodin. Uh, New Bromfords is still considered hill country. I thought so. Uh, it seemed like it. But I think I, I don't know where where it is where it starts to flatten out as you're heading like down towards uh, San Antonio. Uh, certainly Houston is flat. Like going out that way is all flat. But uh, you know Austin. I grew, where I didn't say grew up where I lived in Austin. Hill country. Uh, let's see. Um, I make and smoke my own pastrami two two or three times a year. Oh okay. Well smoking that answers that question. Beethoven and Midnight Runs were great movies. They were. Uh, what is your favorite movie, Val? I have a bunch of favorite movies. I like This is Spinal Tap. Uh, I like um, Monty Python, uh, not The Holy Grail. What's the other one? Uh, Life of Brian. Um, I like 2001 A Space Odyssey. I like, um, let's see, what else do I like? I like, yeah, so that, it's a bunch of, of different movies that I like. Uh, okay, uh, old guy. Uh, all right, let me continue. I think we only have one thing left. We only have one snack left. The company is called Planet Seafood. Interesting name. And these are spicy wasabi crispy Pollock skin chips. There's a lot to take in right there. So um, basically, um, they take, uh, they, they fry, I think they fry it, um, uh, fish skin. And, um, and these are flavored with, with wasabi. Hopefully it's really it's real wasabi and not that you know fake horseradish stuff. That it, the text is always so tiny. Let's see, ingredients: uh, dried pollock that makes sense, sugar, salt, corn, oil, garlic powder, wasabi powder. Okay, there we go. Uh, sugar, yeast extract, wheat gluten. So it's not made with horseradish. It's made with real wasabi. So it should be interesting. Um. I'm not going to say all these products are Korean because I don't think they are, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Did I specify anything? I did not. So dead fish time. Dead fish time? No, I don't have any. Uh, okay, so you're saying we just – no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start with a sweet one because uh, this is spicy wasabi. It's going to be really strong. I have a feeling that these are going to be strong as well. Um, I think we'll start – Let so so as far as the, the food, I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to start with the melon bread. Uh, and then um, work our way spicier. I think we'll do that. Or what I think is spicier. Uh, Val, have you seen the movie Heat starring Al Pacino? I have not. Maybe that's another one I have to um, I have to do. Let's see. Um, Asian dried green pea products come with fish. Uh, well, a lot of those. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about like the age, the uh, snacks, the, uh, the like the snack crackers and everything, and they have the little the little anchovies in there. I think we've done that. And uh, on one or several episodes and everything. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start by um, by opening up our beverage. And again, this is N.O.T. Taro flavored, which is interesting, uh, bubble tea. Somebody somebody check this for me because I think taro or taro root is um, what they get uh, what they get tap uh, make that make tapioca with. And if that's the case. Then the boba pearls being tapioca, this is like double tapioca flavored. Can somebody check that out for me? I'm pretty sure that 
that tapioca is made from taro root, but I'm not I'm not completely sure. You shake that up. It says to shake it up. And it's funny because as you shake it, you start to hear uh, you start to hear the volume increase in it. So there's not as much room in the can. Taro root is used in Asian cakes. It's good. It is. Purple and white cakes. Yeah, because, oh, well, is taro purple by nature? Oh, I was, it's not carbonated, so I was not expecting that squirt all over the place, but there we go anyways. I have Fireball Whiskey and Crown Royal, Val. What do you suggest I drink? I suggest you sip on the Crown Royal and save the Fireball Whiskey for later because the Fireball Whiskey is going to be spicy and it's going to kill your taste on everything else. So, but please sip, John. Uh, tapioca is a starch extracted from the cassava root. Okay. I thought it was somehow related to, to taro. I am, I am incorrect. So we are going to pour this. Uh, Julie's not here today. Uh, she may still be recovering. Um, she had some surgery and um, she was feeling better yesterday. We have a problem here. And the problem is there doesn't look like there's going to be enough room for the boba. Oh, there, there they go. There they go. We're good. Not a lot of boba in that. Oh, I see. You got to knock them out. I want to sip some of this. Yeah, it's like a milk tea. That's nice. That is a nice flavor. You know, we still have little bobas in there. All gone. Uh, yeah, uh, Sonic. I told uh, I told Julie last week because I think I mentioned it last week, and I think everybody in the in the room said um, uh, wished their um, wished speedy recovery to Julie. And uh, again, um, I I spoke with her yesterday, and she's doing fine, and she's feeling much she's feeling better than before she had the surgery. So all is good. You know, it's going to take a few days, but all is good. Crown Royal Reserve Whiskey. It is Brother Val. Okay, John, uh, sip please. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Savor it. Uh, it had Mike, uh, Michael Douglas' great film. Which one? Which one had Michael Douglas? Oh, Falling Down. Yes, Falling Down was a... Oh, the thing about Falling Down, and I don't know if you agree with me. So, so towards the beginning of the movie, like when he goes into the McDonald's that says they're no longer serving breakfast, or he goes to the construction site, where um, where they where he gets them to admit that they're just tearing up the road and they're not really doing anything. Um, so I, I think a lot of t I think or, or there's that scene with the with the um, the guy with the money that's asking for money and everything. Those those things we kind of like watch that and we think and we think to ourselves, yeah yeah, I'm sick of that too. I'm tired of that too. Um, I think maybe maybe he went too far. When he uh, killed the Nazi guy in the in, in his basement with the Zyglon B, I think like um, like that's where you th you think he just he kind of went over the edge on that. But I think up to that point, everything we were everyone was kind of like, yeah, 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 I agree. Not that you feel bad for the Nazi guy um, at all, but uh, but that you just think he just like he just took it too far at that point in time, and then the rest of it is like a down a downward spiral. But uh, but yeah, it is a great film. It is a good movie. Um, yeah, Sonic, I think you just uh, encapsulated what I just said. Uh, uh, Janice, uh, I did tell, Ju uh, tell Julie last week about speedy recovery, but I will, I will share that with her again, unless she pops in today. There's always a possibility that she will pop in. So again, let's try our boba. So I'm going to use my, my improvised boba straw. This is much, much, much wider than any boba straw you would ever use. But again, you know, we had to improvise. So you can see that the boba usually collects at the bottom. And that's why I wanted to put it in a glass. I kind of want you to see what this, when you're drinking a boba tea or a milk tea with boba, uh, kind of what that looks like with the boba in it. And you, what you want to do is you want to drink it and you want to get the boba and then you chew on the boba. So that's how that works. It, for anyone who not, has not had it, I think some of you probably had boba and I'm just preaching to the choir here. So here we go. The flavor is really good. Maybe, maybe a little sweet. The boba, though, 
a boba is different than I'm used to. So I'm used to boba being kind of chewy, like having some texture to it. This one's not as chewy. This one's more like um, more like the consistency of um, like fish eggs, maybe. Uh, maybe when, not not as much liquid in, inside it, every, everything, but almost that kind of uh, like a rubbery as opposed to a chewiness. So the boba kind of has a different flavor than I'm used to. But overall, the drink is a really good good flavor. So yeah, thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up on that one. Uh, have you ever had popping boba? I think I have. I just can't remember. So um, uh, Janice, but uh, but I do like. I do. I mean, most of the time it's chewy, but then sometimes it just it, it kind of pops. Like, oh, oh, what, what, oh, I I know what you're talking about. Uh, they actually have something like that. I think we did a trippy food episode on that at Del Taco because Del Taco ta Del Taco Del Taco had a, a sprite with popping boba in it. And yeah, it's it, it is a lot like uh, it's a lot like fish eggs, where you just kind of pop them open and you have that cold liquid inside it. So uh, so yes, I would say that I have had pop boba. Did I miss anything? The best thing is I don't want lunch. I want breakfast at 11:30, and that was really good. Like like you don't throw it away. What do you do with it? He was like five minutes afterwards. That was interesting. Um, expect not bring a gun into a restaurant demanding change. Yeah, well times have changed. Um, is it just milk tea? Well, it is, it is, uh, taro flavored. Yes. Taro flavored milk tea well, with boba in it. So that's what it is because fresh boba only lasts five, four to five hours max. Yeah. Typically you're, um, you're, um, you're buying it when you're going to drink it. So this is kind of unusual in that they, you know, they prepackage it and put it in a can. And it's probably why the boba takes, tastes different. They had to devise some sort of boba that's going to last in the can before you drink it. Now maybe you should dress up like Michael Douglas, recreate that scene at a last real fast food place and film it just joking. Yes, of course you're just joking, Sonic, because uh, I will probably end in my death. So we're not going to do that. But um, anyway, Val, have you tried to strumming? John King, do go to my channel and do a search for Sustrumming, and you will find the Sustrumming episode that we did. So yes, I have done Sustrumming. I won't, I won't give it away as to how it ended. That's pretty good. I like that. Thumbs up. So I forgot to read a card. I forgot to do the trivia. You guys are supposed to keep me honest here. I forgot to do the trivia. So we will do we will do one now because we're going to start with our first snack. So we'll make it up. Well, do the left. I missed it. I completely missed it. All righty. So uh, let's see. Yeah. All right. Let's pull a card here. And... Bear with me one second. Let me get my deck out. Deck. I said deck. And. There we go. Our new deck of cards. Sort of. I'm, I'm cheating a little bit. Ha! This is a good one. This is a good one. You're going to love this. I'm reading this backwards. That's okay. Uh, so the question is, which Polynesian food is prepared from taro root? Again, the question is, which Polynesian food is prepared from taro root? So back on the fake back burner, turning the volume, the, the volume, turning the heat down low on simmer. There we go. We'll leave that one there. That should be a new game we play on your live stream, Wheel of Food Fortune. Uh, sort of, although, um, Matt Zion does something similar to that on their live stream where he has that wheel that you spin. So what happens is when you donate, uh, money to him on the live stream, he spins the wheel and then whatever it lands on, he has to do sort of like that. Um, I don't, maybe we shouldn't do that because I don't want, I don't want to copy what they do. Um, but maybe something like it, maybe a food game. And the question is, is like, oh, how would we do that? We'd have to have like all kinds of stuff. And everything. We'll, we will figure something out, Sonic. I will take that in, uh, I will take that, um, suggestion into account and, um, uh, we'll see if there's something, some kind of fun game we can play like that. Um, Oh, the Cassandra is in the room. Welcome to the Cassandra. It's good to have you back. I think you were, you, you were back for the first time last week. Uh, after a long um, hiatus, but it is good to see you again. Welcome back to the room, the Cassandra. 
All right, um, so we asked our trivia question. We will start in with our first snack. So our first snack is going to be the uh, tous les jours. And again, please correct me if I'm wrong in the pr pronunciation. I'm not good at French. It's T-O-U-S-L-E-S-J-O-U-R-S. -E I'm thinking it's tous les jours. I could be wrong. Uh, this is honeydew melon bread. Uh, they don't have any of the ingredients on here. I think I took a picture of it, but it doesn't really matter. But I, I, it is made with honeydew powder whatever that, that is, and however you do that. I work at, at Hu Hut now, which is a Mongolian grill-style restaurant and I love it there. Get paid a lot more and have fun. Uh, here's, here's a trivia question. Um, what country is, Mong, is, is Mongolian grill from? And, and I'm when I say Mongolian grill, I don't mean the co a company. I mean that style of, um, of cooking. What country is Mongolian grill from? Shop Smart, Shop H Mart live stream. Uh, is that your co-sponsor, Val? Uh, H Mart? No, it's not my co-sponsor. It's just where I bought all the um, all the particular groceries. So I am. Uh, I took the advice of. Um, I took the advice of Food Taster TV, who said, "Hey, can you at least the titles of the live stream? Can you make them more descriptive, um, as far as?" you know, what you're going to be eating and everything. Now, for something where I got a little bit of everything from everywhere, no, it'll just have a number on it. But it, for anything that's specific to a certain place, like I think last week we did, um, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, not last week, because I think we finished our last um, What's on Valve Shelves last week, but that, even that, the title, What's on Valve Shelves, was very descriptive. And then prior to that, I think we did uh, um, Treasures of 99 Ranch Market. So, so that's what we'll do from now on. Is is if if we're following a theme or anything, we'll make the title match. And it, again, it was a suggestion by Food Taster TV. So hey, Steve Russell in the room, welcome, Steve Russell. Good to have you back again. Um, let's see, did I miss anything else? Keep me honest, guys, because you know um, I don't have any mods yet. I need to make mods. I might I might like assign some of you got some of you guys like some of you reg regular people as mods and then just like you can just catch anything that I miss but but I don't want to make you work um, so I, I I don't know I'll I'll leave it up to you um, you know if you if that would be okay with you um, I'm assuming it's an Evil Dead stream here there was a blood spatter zone when I went to watch the Evil Dead the music they did a, a musical of Evil Dead that sounds interesting that's funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, a few people actually caught that reference of Shop Smart, Shop H Mart in the in the movie Evil Dead. It was Shop Smart, Shop S Mart, uh, and there actually is an S Mart, but it's not. Uh, they don't have a hardware section, and they don't have a guy named Ash working there. So, all right, so let's go ahead and open our cake. Do we get paid to be mods? Uh, you get paid as much as I get paid, which is nothing. <laughs> Two hour work. Pay me. All right, Sonic, I'll take that into account. All right, here we go. Ooh, this is kind of like moist and squishy. Kind of, let's see, put your hand behind that. Does that work? Get it out of our face. All right, so again, I think it's going to be green when we when we open this up. Let's see. It is a, a very light green color. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a, like a light green color. It's light, airy, and spongy. Okay, here we go. And dry. So there's a sweetness on the outside. The outside has kind of like a, like a, you know, typical bread crust. But the ins, I mean, it really does have a lot of the flavor and texture of bread, you know, of a piece of bread. But with the exception of it has this kind of sticky sweetness on the outside. Oh, let's look up for my trash barrel. It has a sticky sweetness on the outside. It's dry on the inside. And it has a subtle flavor, a subtle hint of melon, but not, not really strong. I don't know if, if the green color is from the melon powder or from food coloring. I'm not sure. Take a second bite because sometimes the flavor comes in afterwards. Janice, don't give away your secrets. Then everybody will do that, which is fine. Again, 
just as a recap for the trivia questions, the rules are the rules are that if you know it, throw it out there. If you want to take a guess at it, throw it out there. And if you want to look it up and find out what it is, throw it out there. As far as the point system goes, there's no points. So we don't keep track. It's just fun. So here we go. Sonic, you're you're like trying to to like uh, hedge your bets there. Okay, so as far as the melon cake goes, I'm gonna give it a thumbs in the middle. I mean, it's kind of interesting that it has that melon flavor, but other than that, it's kind of like really dry on the inside. Um, I don't mind so much the sweetness on the outside, but it's just like not enough melon flavor to make it you know interesting or different. So my right, thumbs in the middle on that one. And in case I didn't rate the boba. The uh, boba tea, I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Like I said, even though the boba is not, as I remember, like, you know, chewy, there's not, not chewiness to it, still overall flavor and everything, pretty good. So, and and nice that you can get it in a can. So if you're, if you're jonesing for a boba tea or bubble tea, there you go. That's my thing. So let's review our question, shall we? And our question was, which Polynesian food is prepared from the taro root? And let's go back and see what people said. How, how far back do I have to go? Right about there, Janis Yamanaka just shot it out there and said, boy, Sonic Jet said multiple choice. No, it was not a multiple choice question. Um, Snorkel said poi. Old guy said poi. I'm surprised he didn't say kumquat, but, it, uh, but he did say poi. Um, let's see. Were there any other guesses? I don't see any other guesses. So everybody who said poi is absolutely correct. It is poi. Uh, here's a question. Has anybody had poi? Anybody out there had poi? Uh, poi is big in Hawaii. So if you ever go to a luau where they make kalua pig and they they kind of bury it in the in, they bury it on a fire in the ground um, and um, and do it like that. They usually um, uh, poi is a like a side dish. It's almost like a con a condiment. It's not like you would eat a big bowl of poi. It's usually a, a side dish. Not everybody likes it. And it is and it is purple in color, I believe. Uh, my city just lifted the mask policy, so my restaurant can't tell people they have to wear a mask even though we are a private business. Are you vaccinated, Drew? I hope. Uh, it is windy here in the Southern California area. I am in Southern California. It doesn't seem too bad here. And we usually get the wind off the mountains and everything, but uh, but we'll see. So if you hear this like rattling noise, it's my the blinds in the window the wind knocking them around. It could happen. It is windy. Where are you? I am in uh, LA. I am on the northern part of LA. Yes, I've had a, had to put a bunch of sugar in it for it to be pal palatable. Oh, okay. I So um, I never, like, I remember I went I went to a, a luau in um, in Hawaii and um, and they had poi, but I don't remember like anyone adding anything to it and I just ate it as is. It was, for me, it wasn't bad, but there were people at the table going, Ew. so there we go. So poi is the is the answer, and we're gonna shuffle this back into the deck. And it is time for another snack. So we will ask another question. So let me pull on another card, a different card, and uh, and I assure you this is a different card. You can cl clearly see this is a different card. Our second question is, what is the is the maple is the uh, let me try that again in English. What is maple syrup rating based on and how are the different ratings achieved? Again, the question, what is maple syrup rating based on and how are the different ratings achieved? That goes, I'm going to put that on the front burner just to be different. I'm going to put it on the front burner and turn it down to, we'll turn it to low. So we're not even going to put that on like, yeah, maybe on medium. I don't know. We'll, we'll change it up. Uh, I have a sister who lives in Redding, Redding, California. Yeah, that's way far north. That's about seven hours from L.A. Uh, Redding's a nice place. It's okay. Uh, I mean, there's some bad places, up, but there's some bad places everywhere. Um, the cool thing in Redding is the Sundial Bridge. If you not, have not been to the Sundial Bridge, that's a kind of a cool place. It is a pedestrian bridge that goes over a river. I don't know what that river is that goes through Redding, but there's a bridge that goes over it, and there's a huge, gigantic, I'm going to say gigantic, it probably like, 60 to 70 feet tall sundial on the bridge and they call it sundial bridge that's kind of a cool, a cool thing in reading 
Uh, okay, so uh, let us do our next snack. I think we're going to go with the um, dandelion kimchi. Let's do the dandelion kimchi. Because I have a feeling that... Now, dandelion, if any of you have ever had dandelion, it's a little, it's, it's kind of bitter. It's almost like an arugula, a kind of like that. Um, it's a little bit bitter. Uh, I remember as a kid, uh, I don't remember a lot because my I, I only met my grandfather a couple of times, but I remember as a kid, um, he was out in the yard picking dandelions for salad. My grandfather was Italian um, from Italy, Italian from Italy, and um, he used to pick dandelions in the yard to make salad with that, so... That's really interesting. Look at that. That's really dark. Because dandelions are green, but I guess I guess once you do this to it, it turns dark. So um, we have chopsticks and we have a fork. I think I'm going to use the chopsticks. These are Yoshinoya chopsticks. I guess like when you go into Yoshinoya, you can buy chopsticks. And that's probably what I did. Otherwise, I don't know where I got them. Uh, I have had dandelion tea as well, Amy Kiki, but, um, um, uh, and I've eaten dandelion in salad, but I haven't had dandelion kimchi, so this looks interesting. Uh, it looks like red peppers. Uh, yeah, they, they do. They almost look like those Thai chilies, um, but, you know, when you look closer, if we can do that, and without spilling this all over the computer, it's like, uh, uh, it almost looks like seaweed. Let's try some of this. It has that, it has kind of like um, like a smoky flavor. I mean, a smoky smell. Um, also, it has another smell that I can't quite place. Um, maybe like a pepper smell? Cheers. Ooh. That is really interesting. Spicy too. It's got a kick. It requires a lot of chewing. It's a little grassy, more so than I think more more than you if you eat the dandelion in a salad. There seems to be like a little bit more texture to it, a little bit more chewiness to it. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that's really good. Just the right amount of spice. And that the paste that they use to, to make the kimchi, there's a little bit of grittiness to it, but it's not like unpleasant or anything. We got a really nice spice, though. Oh, my God, was that an earthquake? It wasn't. That's a thumbs way up. That's really nice. I'm going to be eating that all week. Well, for the next couple of days, then it would be gone. Uh, I just tried the Taki Waves chips. They taste weird at first, but I'm addicted now. Amy, I'm trying to think if we did. I, I think I, I, I want to say that I did that with reckless eating, but I don't think it was the Waves chips. I think it was the, the, the Taki popcorn, which is really weird as well. So I'll have to try the Waves chips. But uh, yeah, big thumbs up on that. Oh, hi, Doodle. You want another snack or another pizza snack? But again, I, you got to pace yourself, man. I don't. Have you eaten your food? Why am I expecting an answer from him? He's not going to answer me. We'll give him a little piece. There you go. Hi, Doodle. Oh, you're going to chill with me. Okay. Oh, no. He's gone. That's it. I think Matt just tried them. They look like ruffles. They look like ruffles, but they look much thicker than ruffles. So they have this, like, a hard crunch to it and everything. But uh, <clears throat> I will have to try those if I – I have to go back and, and see, did I try those with Matt? And if not, I don't have to try them again. So uh, back to our card. Our card was, what is maple syrup rating based on, and how are the different ratings achieved? So let's see. Um, what did people say? People said – um, the rating is based on the color of the syrup. That's what Janice says. Uh, Sonic says maple syrup comes from trees. Uh, that's true. Um, the Cassandra says based on color and sweetness. Let's see. Um, Tom 
says it's clear before processing. Tom, I, I'll bet you Tom has maple trees like near him where he could actually go out and he could actually uh, harvest his own maple syrup, I'll bet. You can only do it at certain times of the year. Um, I not, I'm not sure exactly what the um, what the deal was. Uh, I went to a sugar shack in, Mon in, not Montreal, between Montreal and Quebec, somewhere in between there. Went to a sugar shack where they actually processed the maple syrup. And they mentioned that that to to for the maple syrup, uh, syrup to run, they have it has to be like below a certain temperature both during the day and at night. Um, so then in the spring when it starts to warm up and everything, the the the, um, the sap stops flowing, um, and also in the in the fall. So there's only there's a very very narrow window <clears throat> when they can actually harvest it. But uh, but Tom, I'm just I'm thinking like where you are. You know, you're far enough north that you probably have maple trees. You could probably go ahead and do that. And I don't think there's a difference in maple tree. I think there's a sugar maple, but I don't. I don't really know that there's a lot of like. I don't think, like, I don't think it's going to be poisonous or anything like that. So uh, that would be interesting to see if you could. Um, that might that one might be an interesting episode for you to do. See if you can harvest some maple syrup. That would be kind of cool. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. We were, we weren't we were still discussing this. What is maple syrup rating based and based on how are the different ratings achieved? So I got a lot of answers on the first one, but not on the second question, part of the question. But that's okay. So the uh, maple syrup rating is based on color from light to dark. So flavor not so much, except obviously um, when when it's darker, it's going to have more sugar in it because you you. Um, you, you've gotten most of the water out of that. So again, the, the the answer to the second question, the different colors are achieved by how long the syrup is boiled. So they boil the syrup, and when they boil it, they remove the water from it. And so um, so the darker it is, the thicker it is, and the more sugar it's going to have in it. So that's what the uh, the rating system is. But apparently, it's a very official thing, and you have you you it, it's like you you can't mess around with the rating system. So that is that. Uh, let's see what I missed while I was yapping. I tried the Takis meat sticks. They make Takis meat sticks. I never heard of that. Uh, Takis peanuts. I guess there's like, they, they're just expanding into it. Well, okay. So, uh, as far as Takis peanuts go, I'm not sure that's necessarily Takis per se. So Takis is owned by, uh, Barcel and Barcel, the company Barcel makes hot nuts. They're not called Takis, they're just called Hot Nuts. So that might be what you're talking about is the Barcel Hot Nuts, which is from the same company that makes Takis. I think that might be what you're talking about. But unless there is a specific Takis Nuts, I have not seen that. But I, like I said, I have. we actually tried the Hot Nuts on, um, on Trippy Food. I think we have an episode where we did that. Uh, I always hated Dr. Pepper until I tried some when I was stoned. Well, the other thing is if you try it when you're stoned, do you remember it? I mean, that, that was my thing is like... Uh, I remember when I was a uh, uh, late teenager, um, I would go to concerts and sometimes I would I would smoke before I went to a concert. And then um, I think I went to two concerts like that. And then I came back going like, I don't remember the concert. I don't remember much about the concert. And then I stopped doing that because I wanted to really experience some music and be able to remember it. So I, I didn't do that anymore after that. But uh, I imagine the same thing with Dr. Pepper. It's like you should, if you, if you enjoyed it while you were stoned, try it straight and see if, you know, see if that helped. It might be an acquired taste. Uh, I was drinking Dr. Pepper when I was a kid, but it was because you didn't have to share it with anybody. So that was it. Hey, I see somebody saying hi, Rob Switch, which means that Rob Switch snuck into the room. Rob Switch, welcome to the room. We're back to the room. It's good to see you again. Uh, always good to see you, Rob. Uh, nothing beats a good Dr. Pepper. I really got into diet soda for a while, but but I heard it's bad for you. Yeah, what isn't bad for you? But um, I mean, like soda, there's so much sugar in it, and that's bad for you too. But diet soda can be because of what they put in it. So like uh, it used to have uh, saccharin in it, which was really bad for you. And then they switched to aspartame, which is bit really bad for you, you know, over a period of time, bad for you and everything. So I don't know. Can you, can you really, can you win? Uh, and the answer probably is no, you cannot win. Um, there are some places, I, I've never done it, but I have heard that there's some people that drink Dr. Pepper warm. So they heat it up on the stove, Dr. Pepper. I don't, uh, has anybody else heard that? Uh, I also, I know that uh, that some people in the South, they put peanuts in a, they'll, they'll take one of those little packets of peanuts and pour it in and put it into a bottle of Coke. They'll also do it with Dr. Pepper. So anybody else familiar with that? Or anybody else have done that? 
Uh, Drew, you should try sparkling. Fo okay, this is going back and forth. You guys making suggestions for each other. Diet soda is bad because it's sometimes people digest it weird. Well, I mean, just, there's just stuff in it that's bad. Like uh, um, the aspartame um, affects your brain over a period of time. Um, uh, the, the high amount of sugar that they put in in the non-diet drinks, um, you know, um, lead to or make have problems with uh, diabetes and things like that. So it's like, you know, I don't know what is, what is the. Uh, I guess I guess if you do like a a flavored, uh, flavored sparkling water, you know, that's probably the that's probably the most healthy thing for you, where it's just a, it's just flavoring and and sparkling water. But you know, if you're used to that that sweetness of a, of a soda, yeah, it's probably not going to satisfy you. That's just my take on it. There's a double crunch Takis peanut. I will have to check that out, Tom. Did you do that in in uh, one of your um, review boards? Takis sunflower seeds are delicious. I guess they they kind of branch out and do a little bit of everything now. They're sort of like Reese's. You know, Reese's is doing a little bit of everything. Uh, been, uh, been getting into the drinking club soda or sparkling water. It gives me the same satisfaction as soda as does the carbonation, but I'll have to try that. Other Drew, I agree with you completely. I drink, uh, well, I got, you know, lemon flavored sparkling water from Trader Joe's. So, uh, it does, it does for me satisfy it, but if you're used to that, the sweetness of a soda, that's not going to satisfy you. So, you know, but it, it, it um, once you're used to that, I stopped, I stopped putting sugar in things. Like uh, I used to put sugar in my coffee, put sugar in my tea and everything. And I stopped doing that years ago. And, uh, and now I don't miss it. And now when I drink something that has sugar in it, it's like, you know, crazy like that. So I'm the opposite valve being stoned concert is make is amazing. I can enjoy and feel the music better for me. Yeah. But, um, that's true, Amy. But, but then I, then I think that's a, like a one-time experience. So, so it's a, it's a cool experience while you're doing it. But then afterwards, if you want to try to remember that experience, it makes it more difficult to do. So it's kind of like a, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other thing. Uh, Tom, you have had warm Dr. Pepper in the winter. Oh, um, is it much different? Is it a lot different? Or did you put anything in it? Coke with peanuts in it is awesome. So, John, uh, you living in Texas, I, I'm not surprised. I think, John, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think you said you're originally from North Carolina. Is that right? Um, which would, I mean, you know, that's Peanut Alley right there, like Virginia and um, North Carolina and everything. Uh, sorry, Val, had to get the kids to their dinner. How are you? I am fine, Rob, and yourself? Uh, hopefully we will work together again soon. Um, give me a uh, text or a call or something, and we'll, we will work something out. Uh, kombucha is also really good, very low sugar and great taste. Sometimes I do feel a tiny buzz as well. Well, you have to be careful with kombucha. Like I, I know a lot of people make their own kombucha, kombucha and it can, it, you have to be very, very careful because if you if you get the wrong kind of bacteria going in there, you can kill yourself. So you have to be really, really careful. I have a Roadkill Cafe t-shirt. Um, what is it from an actual Roadkill Cafe or is it just kind of like a, a thing? So this one, this one I think is not based on a real Roadkill Cafe. I think it's just kind of like a novelty uh, metal sign. Again, thank you, M Michelle Grant, for the sign. Uh, but there are some restaurants called Roadkill Cafe. I know there's one in New Hampshire, a Roadkill Cafe. They don't serve Roadkill, so it's just a catchy name. But um, but I'm just curious, is your Roadkill Cafe shirt based on a restaurant or based on the, just the fictional idea of a Roadkill Cafe? Don't know. I uh, hate that everything is loaded with sugar and salt. Wish there were better alternatives for snacks with very little salt or sugar. Yo, commercially, unless you make it yourself, Drew. Uh, I suppose you could make like make your own version of Chex Mix or something like that in the oven. You know, you can do that, uh, and you wouldn't have to have a lot of salt or, or sugar in it. But you know, it's based on it, it's it. Like the thing is, if you're using pretzels or you're using corn Chex or something like that, then there's probably a lot of sugar and salt already in it. So you're not going to add anything to it. So I don't know. That's a tough question. Unless you're going to bake your own Gardettos. Maybe that's what it is. Flavor seems a bit stronger when it's warm. I'm going to have to try that. South Carolina. Sorry, John King. I knew it was a Carolina. I don't remember which one. So yeah, uh, not surprising at all. Um, check out Sprouts and Trader Joe's snacks. A lot of great choices that are low fat, low sugar, low sodium. I agree with you, Amy. That's uh, a good. That's a good call, Trader Joe's, especially Sprouts. And, and even um, uh, Whole Paycheck, uh, Whole Foods. You, no doodle, you just had two snacks in a short period of time. I'm gonna have to pace you, okay? Now, if you wanna come up and say hi, you can do that. But, but, but as far as the snacks go, I'm gonna have to ask you to hold off a little bit more and get another snack. 
Hi, Doodle. Say hi to everybody who might have missed you because you came in at the beginning. Doodle, over here. Doodle. There you go. See? Look, over there. Yeah, you're going to say hi? You're going to say hi? Is that that's the closest we get to hi, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, Doodle. You want to chill there? That's fine. And I will get you a snack in a little bit, but you're going to have to calm down. I uh, got the magazine things you never knew existed. Oh, okay. There is um, there's a great uh, reference book uh, called Panati's Guide to Everything that has a lot of really unusual things and origins of things and everything. That's kind of cool too. Uh, I think there's a Trader Joe's kind of near me where I recently moved to. I'll have to check it out. Yes, definitely check it out, Drew. A lot of the things that we've done on this channel we have done from uh, Trader Joe's. Dude, Doodle is the cutest, isn't he? He is. He is. He is the cutest. Time for our next snack. So uh, let's see. How are we doing on time? We're now we're in. Got two snacks left. We're we're good. Uh, hang on one second. No, I was waiting for a Grub Warp, but I don't see Grub Warp. So Grub Warp, if you sneak into the room or if you're lurking in the background, let me know you're there because I have something for you. All right. Uh, let's do our next snack. So we'll read another card here, and our our next question is, who? Who invented the slider? You don't have to give me a person's name, but who invented the slider? And if you can tell me what year it was, extra points that don't count. So that goes on the back burner, and we will go to our next snack. I think let's do the uh, the seasoned splice spliced the seasoned sliced squid. Let's go ahead and do that. Doodle, you can't have this. This is spicy. I'll be, I'll be following you around with a little shovel all day. It smells spicy. Whatever the whatever the um, the chili uh, paste or whatever that they put on that um, kind of hides the um, the oceany smell, the low tide kind of smell that you can get with squid. Uh, I guess it's 20 miles away. We be worth the trip. Well, you know, like if someday you want to, um, you know, I, I, I guess it depends on on how much you're used to driving. For like for me, 20 miles away, I do that all the time. But um, well, that's because because LA is so big. But uh, you know, I I think of Tom like when he wants to go to like a Sonic or something like that. It's like a like a 200 mile drive for him because it's not a lot lot near him. So 20 miles isn't, isn't bad. Um, yeah, you should give it a shot. Anyways. Um, Okay, people are starting to guess. Let's go ahead and try our snack. Ooh, I was gonna use. I'm gonna. I'm trying to use the chopsticks, but it's like really. Everything is really sticky. I don't know why it's so sticky. It does look like spaghetti though, but that's squid. It's very chewy. There's kind of a funky taste there. I'm guessing it's squid. There's some sweetness to it. And a mild spice. Not a really hot spice. Now, this is in a small container. Relatively small, you know. Relatively small container. This will take a long time to eat because you have to chew. There's like so much chewiness to it. But you know, it's squid. Those of you that had squid, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, Jesse Torres in the room. Welcome, Jesse. Good to see you again. Everybody, please give. Oh, everybody. I was going to say give Jesse a warm, trippy food. Welcome, but I see you're already doing that. I'm still chewing that squid. If you don't like chewy stuff like that, like jerky, you're going to hate that. Eat it like a duck. How does a duck eat seasoned sliced squid? I imagine they just stick their face in there and go to town. Well, no, I take that back because a duck probably would eat squid, a little squid, or maybe eat it whole. Well, no, if they eat it whole, that means they just caught it and they're going to eat it and it'll probably kill them because the squid does not want to go down and it will probably stick to the inside of their throat and kill the duck. I don't know. I honestly don't know. John King, that is interesting. You could be right. 
Hey, Julie Couture in the room. Can't stay, but just popping by to say hello. My in-laws came up to surprise the kiddos. Oh, oh, that, oh the in-laws from Florida. Cool. We're out to dinner. Hope you're all well and have a great show, Dad. Uh, Julie, uh, just so that you know, everyone in the room was wishing you a, a speedy recovery. And I told them that I, when I talked to you yesterday, that you say you're feeling even better than you did before the surgery. And so, but they, but they did, um, especially like Janice and some other people that just specifically wish you a speedy recovery. So just want to pass that on if you're still there. And if not, enjoy your dinner and tell everybody I said hi. Uh, all right. I guess it's time to rate this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give that a thumbs up. Um, me, I like chewy stuff. I like chewing on stuff. Uh, so I'm going to give that a thumbs up. Uh, not Certainly not for everybody, but for me, a thumbs up. It's really nice. It's not as, I mean, like I, I could see it being a little bit spicier, but they don't say that it's spicy. They just say that it's seasoned. So uh, really, really nice. I like that. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit sweet. It's still going to get the thumbs up for me. So that's, I will be, I will be eating all the rest of this. Definitely. So that's a thumbs up for me. So let's go back to our question. And our question was this, who invented the slider? Now, um, John King said, George Blade Holder. Uh, can somebody verify that for me? Because I did not know that there was a specific person, um, but it could be it could be actually correct. It could be a George Blade Holder, unless John King is pulling my leg. Um, but let's see. Um, let's see. Janice Yamanaka said, White Castle in 1921. Uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado, said, the slider was first created at White Castle, a popular American fast food chain restaurant. White Castle became famous for their cheap and greasy mini burgers, and the tradition continues to this day. Tom is uh, Tom and Janice, let's see, did anybody else answer that question? I don't see it, but uh, you guys are absolutely correct. It was White Castle in 1921. They invented the slider, and they and you can go to a White Castle today, you can continue to get a slider. I will tell you, uh, in case you don't know, that um, there will be a trippy food episode out shortly, uh, which is which, which will also coincide with the next we go, uh, trip, uh, reckless eating we go main show uh, on our trip to Las Vegas, where we actually went to a White Castle, and uh, and so the thing is like White Castle's been around since 1921, so it's 100 years old this year, um, and some people are going like, what's the big deal with White Castle? Well. They have, they are not, and have never been on the West Coast. So they have never been in California, Oregon, Washington. Never been in, in the West Coast at all. And the closest one to the West Coast is Nevada. So why were we there? I decided we're definitely going to check that out, so that people who are not familiar with White Castle can see what the whole White Castle thing is all about. Now you can buy it in California in the frozen food section. I can't see how that would be good. I can't see how the whole thing frozen, bun and all, and having to be reheated probably in the microwave oven. Could, could compare to actually getting one off the line. So for you, for your entertainment pleasure, uh, we are gonna do, we, we have an episode, a, a, um, uh, a White Castle episode, and, uh, and it will also be featured on uh, Reckless Eating's We Go Main Show from Las Vegas. I think part two, part two of that. So it, there's so much fun in a short period of time that they have to do two, two like a part one and a part two. So there we go. Uh, he is right but not how you think. Um, who is right? I'm uh, Pudding, uh, which, uh, what are we referring to where he says, he is right, but not how you think. Uh, I am right, but not how you think about what? Oh, George, the George Blayholder. George Blayholder was credited with using it. Hey, this. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to try to see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on my, iPhone and see if I can find if I can get on the stream. And if I can get on the stream, I don't know. I don't know if that means anything at all whatsoever. But let's see. Uh, let's see. Let me look for my stuff. And we're back. Oh, we are back. Okay, cool. All right. That means I don't have to do all that fun stuff on my phone. But sorry about that. Um, the joys of using YouTube. Doodle, you cannot have another snack yet. I know you're so excited and everything, but you're going to have to pace yourself on the snack, okay, guy? I see you and hear you. So where did where did we drop off? Did, did we finish with the whole um, with the whole uh, White Castle thing? Did I mention the the the, um, the upcoming 
reckless eating we go main shorts and white castle did i mention that we have a trippy food episode coming out at white castle did i mention that the whole las vegas thing the fact that they're not on the west coast and they've never been on the west coast so so that's why las vegas is a big deal i don't know apparently downstream are anti-baseball talk do we were talking about baseball who brought up baseball i don't remember baseball oh the nickel curve thing i guess I, okay is there such a thing called a nickel curve in baseball? I don't know. I never heard of that. You know, I heard of curve ball, but not nickel curve. So uh, you just started to read his comment about George throwing the first slider pitch. Yeah, but I don't remember what I said afterwards. So hopefully everything's out. Hopefully I said everything. That's cool. We do have one snack left. Well, we have one snack left. But we have something that I was going to do if Grub Warp was in the room. And Grub Warp is not in the room, but you know what? Uh, we grub. We will do it anyways, and grub work can watch it later. So there we go. That they call it a slider now. Well, they call they oh oh you're talking about uh, at um, in St. Louis they call it a slider now. Yeah, but they always call it a slider at uh, at White Castle since 1921. Some more boba. Mmm. The sweetness and the milkiness of that boba kind of conflicts with the spice, with the spicy, kind of chili pastiness of this. They're not good flavors together. All right, I didn't get no ice cream. Pudding, let me get ice cream. Why don't you even talk about ice cream? We don't have ice cream. We don't got no ice cream. We don't got to show you no stinking ice cream. All right, so we're gonna do our fourth snack. Time for another card. And the question is, which fruit or vegetable has the highest concentration of vitamin C? This is going to be a multiple choice question. So which fruit or vegetable has the highest concentration of vitamin C? Is it A, oranges, B, strawberries, or C, red bell peppers? And we're going to put that on the back burner, let that simmer for a little bit, let you guys work on that. Hopefully you can still hear me. Hopefully we have not died. I am going to chug a 40 ounce Mickey's malt liquor. John, I don't know how many times I got to tell you this. Pace yourself, brother. Uh, unless you're doing it like as a competition with other people and everything. Um, what, what is the point of chugging a 40 ounce Mickey's? You know, like nobody's going to watch it unless you're filming it. So just pace yourself, man. Pace yourself. Kumquats. That is, um, you know what? Based on when, when I ate the kumquats, I would think that was the case, but. There's a difference between uh, there's a difference between citric acid and vitamin C, a big difference. So, uh, about to drink a couple of models before work. Models, 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 modellas, maybe modellas. Um, okay, so let us uh, open our last fourth and last snack, which is Planet Seafood Spicy Wasabi Crispy Pollock Skin Chips. There's so much to take in there. Uh, Asian packaging, always hard to open, but they give you that nice little, you know, tear thing. So it makes it easier. Modelo's. I figured that one out. Oh, not much of a smell. You would think that uh, being, being made with fish skin, it would have a strong smell. Or uh, having wasabi powder on it would have a strong smell. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That really is your line, isn't it, Tom? Let you have a look at that. Look like dreaded worms, little baby eels or something. But that's fish skin. Oh, that is crazy. Oh, and the wasabi. Mm, right off the bat. Holy cow. Hey, Ryan Jones, welcome to the room. That's okay. You can watch. We know you're there, and thank you for joining us. Wow. Oh, my God. You can't taste the fish. This is, like, really, really crunchy. I know you guys can hear that. That ASMR is uh, off the board. But the wasabi. And, and again, it's not that that green green colored horseradish. Like it's real wasabi. And it is concentrated. Holy cow. 
That is a serious snack. That is not for lightweights. Wow. I'm a little disappointed because I kind of wanted that, that fish skin taste. And the wasabi overpowers everything. But the fact that they're actually using real wasabi and the, pack, the fact that it's like really power packed um, and packs a punch, it's kind of fun. I like the, the texture. The texture is completely different. I expect it to be crispy, like, you know, you kind of break into it and it break, falls apart and everything. But it's, really, it's like, it's crunchy crispy. Not like not like hard crunchy, but but crunchy crispy. Um, it's not unpleasant flavor. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna give it a thumbs way up because, like I said, it's fun. It's it's really you know crazy spicy and everything else like that. So yeah, I'm gonna give that a big thumbs up. That is the craziest thing I've ever eaten. There's just like so much wasabi flavor. It's amazing, but I you know can't taste the fish. And maybe that's a good thing for some people. If you don't like the kind of fishy things, that might be a good thing for you. So. Hey, Sonic is taking off. Let's see. Uh, have to go talk later. Okay, well, Sonic, thank you again for joining us once again. Um, Sonic has a has a great attendance record for our Trippy Food live streams, and it's always good to have you here, Sonic. So um, he likes to push the envelope sometimes, but still, it's fun to have you here. So, Sonic, have a great rest of your day, and thank you for joining us. I can't stand it when lime honestly seen for Coronas. Yeah, well, I don't uh, – any beer that you have to put a lime in it to make it taste better – I, to me, is not worth. It's not really worth that. So that's just that's my take on it, or anything. It's like you shouldn't have to put any. Now I do understand that there are some beers that are made with flavor, like that are lime flavored because there's lime in it. They they brew it with lime or other you know citrus flavors and everything. But <clears throat> but like I said, anything that you have to put lime or put something else in to improve the taste, like like uh, tequila, you you do it with lime and and salt. You're killing the taste of the tequila. So really, really, really good tequila. You should be able to sip. So there, that's kind of, there it is. So, uh, but yeah, anything you have to put in lime in, like, like why bother, right? Uh, although Drew, I will say, as far as the Coronas go, and Rob, uh, Rob, a switch maybe still in the room, is um, as I don't like Corona. Uh, I don't like the taste of Corona. I, I like never mind putting a lemon or a lime in it. I just don't like Corona. But they do have the Corona Corona Familiar, and for some reason that's really good. Like I I, I drank that with Rob. We did a I'm trying to remember we did that on Rob's channel or we did that on Trippy Food. I can't remember, but did that with Rob, and um, and honestly it was really good. Um, the the Familiar, but but, uh, but regular Corona not so much. Uh, take care, Cassandra. Oh, oh, that's Sonic saying goodbye. Okay. Hey, Philip Gerard in the room after we have eaten everything already. Uh, joining after eating Mexican food at the Pink Cactus. Oh, um, so should that be a um, um, Nopale Rosé? Uh, Rose? Nopale Rosé would be Pink Cactus in Spanish, which would, would probably be excellent Mexican food. It was called Nopales, or Nopal, Nopal, Nopal Rosé. That would be excellent Mexican food because it's it's in Spanish, but you know, I'll take your word for it. What'd you have, Phil? Um, oh, see, Tom's ahead of me. He's already asking what you had. Love me a good Corona. Really, Rob? I'm not really crazy about it. We filmed it after I interviewed you. Oh, so we we filmed it from. Oh, okay. So it was the interview we did on your channel, and we drank it on your channel. That's what it was. Okay, thanks, Rob. I remember. I I didn't remember it completely the way I thought I remembered it. I love Corona. Used to hate them, but somehow my opinion changed. This is why I drink Coors Banquet beer. I've not tried Coors Banquet beer. I will have to try that. Maybe next Tribute Food Beer Night, we'll just do a Coors Banquet beer. Why not? What's you know? We do beers. We're not. We're not. You know. We just we'll try everything. The only thing better than a good Corona is Dos Coronas. <laughs> hey, Food Taster TV. What did you miss? You missed us doing our beverage and our snack. But that's okay because we'll do a recap right now. Um, Let's have another sip of our boba tea. Very nice. We did not answer our trivia question, so let's go ahead and do that. Our question was, what fruit or vegetable has the highest concentration of vitamin C? A was oranges. B was strawberries. C was red bell peppers. Let's see what people said. I know Tom said kumquat, so I didn't even have to look that one up. Um... See, the Cassandra said orange. 
Janice Yamanaka said red bell peppers. Uh, John King said red bell peppers. Um, Drew Horse said, or lemon, but I don't know if that's, was the same, was answering the same question, or lemon. Um, the correct answer is, in fact, C, red bell peppers. And I know that sounds crazy, but actually red bell peppers does have more, uh, highest concentration of vitamin C uh, than oranges. Uh, also, strawberries have a higher concentration than oranges as well. But so there's a lot of, of, of unusual foods that you would not think would have vitamin C in it that actually do. So, uh, but orange, oranges and lemon have high, uh, orange, well, all citrus fruits, tangerines, et cetera. They do have vitamin C in them, but there are some fruit, some foods, some fruits and vegetables that actually have a higher concentration. As, and again, the trick is concentration, higher concentration of vitamin C than the other ones. So uh, yes, the correct answer is C, red bell peppers has a higher concentration of vitamin C than the others. So there we go. Um, Food Taster TV said oranges. Well, you know, uh, no, but that's okay. Uh, Val, will you will you will like the taste of Coors Banquet? Well, I uh, I don't know if I'll hold you responsible for that, John, but I we will definitely try that. So maybe next week is a tribute food beer night. Maybe we'll do a Coors Banquet for you. So how's that? That's well, close to your birthday too, right? Well, a week earlier than your birthday, but that's okay. We might do that anyways. Uh, we had chili rileno appetizer, an enchilada dish, and a taco plate. Great food if you're interested in Mexican food in Charleston. Yeah, um, Charleston has some, has some good, interesting um, ethnic stuff. Um, if you get a chance, Phil, I don't know if you have tried it yet, but it's a place called Zaobao Biscuit. It is in an old gas station, and they do, I guess, Thai-inspired food, but it's really good, too. So you should check that out if you have not checked that out. Uh, Zaobao Biscuit? Am I saying that right? I think that's right. Um, check that out if you have not checked that out. And it is in Charleston as well. Uh, you and Matt were the first YouTubers that worked with me being a fan of Reckless Eating for years and watching you there. Uh, fan fanboy, but only a little bit. Uh, Rob, it's, it is a pleasure working with you, and I enjoy your channel as well. So um, anything I can do to help to uh, inspire people to check your channel out, I will do that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm sharing that with people in the room. We have a lot of people on here who do have channels. Janice has a channel, Janice Yamanaka. You check out her channel. Uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado, as a matter of fact, he is doing a live stream two hours after ours ends. So uh, that is, uh, ours ends at three, it would be five Pacific time. Uh, so it is 6 p.m. Uh, mountain time. Tom does a live stream. Uh, Janice Hero, I thought I'm saying her name correctly, uh, from Canada. Uh, she does, she also does a live stream on, Sat on Saturdays. Um, I'm not sure. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. But also check out like uh, Food Taster TV. Check out his channel. He does some great stuff on his channel. Um, you know, and Rob. So definitely, um, definitely this community. Uh, check out all the channel. Um, you know what to do? If you go to my, um, if you go to my YouTube page at the bottom of the page, I have like I think it's like subscriptions or whatever. But the channels. The, the channels that I recommend are all down there, and any of the people that in the chat that have channels, um, I have down there, and so you should check those out. So so that's where you can find them all. You can find the links to them all off my main page. Um, we are in next Saturday. Date is set. Cool. All right. Definitely check it out. Let me know what you think. Also, Phil, if you get a chance to go out to um, Bertha's or Mary Lou's, either one, um, it's like uh, soul food, very uh, non-pretentious you know, paper plates kind of stuff and everything, but it's amazing. So you should check those two out as well. One of those two, uh, um, it's 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 like home home cooking, soul food, Mary Lou's or um, Bertha's. Ch check one or, or both of those out. That would be cool. I'll find some other stuff for you as well. Um, let's do something crazy because that's how we roll here. Uh, Oh, uh, Ken, Ken Domic does a live stream tonight as well. At 6 p.m., what time, John? Uh, uh, you're, in, you're in Texas here in Central Time. So is it 6 p.m. Central Time that uh, that Ken does his, his live stream? Janice, an old guy, wouldn't have met them or seen their channels without meeting you. Lots of amazing creators here. Yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe so. And I have had the pleasure of meet, of actually uh, filming with Janice because we're, we're local. Um, hopefully in the future... Um, I'll travel out there or people will come here. Uh, I know that Tom, uh, Tom, old guy in Colorado is planning on coming out here, I think in the fall and we'll do something with Tom live, not live, live, but live. 
uh, when Tom comes out here in the fall. Um, also, uh, so, so you mentioned reckless eating. Also, uh, I believe reckless eating does a live stream tonight as well. He may be taking the day off because he did a 12 hour stream yesterday and I think he kind of wiped himself out. So he may be taking a break today and may actually be, not be doing another live stream today, but typically he does on Saturdays, um, probably uh, right around the time that we go off. So, uh, 3, 3 PM Pacific time, usually when he does his, um, 7 PM, uh, 7 p.m. Pacific uh, Central Time in Canada. Yeah, but Canada has time zones just like we do, so I'm not sure um, which time zone you're talking about at 6 p.m. John, John King, 12-hour stream. Holy smokes! Yeah, um, and and I kind of felt bad for him because I like I tuned in like towards the end, and um, and it's pretty brutal because when people donate things, he spins the wheel and he does the things on the wheel and everything, and he uh, he physically puts himself through a lot doing that. So whether it's it's like doing a chug of something off camera, of course, or eating something he doesn't like, or eating really really hot spicy stuff, or eating insects which he doesn't really care about, uh, like at, at one point he ate a whole uh, scorpion, and um, and it didn't go well uh, for him. I mean, I would have loved it, but you know he's not me. Uh, he doesn't dig uh, roasted scorpions, but I do. But uh, but he had a rough time with it, so yeah uh one or so is good for me yeah same here um i i do two hours because that's kind of what everybody agreed to towards the beginning when we first started doing this and people said yeah two hours is plenty you know because the thing is is like you're certainly not going to devote your entire day or your entire afternoon to watching me yap i could do it but um uh, but yeah i'm i'm not going to uh, I think two hours is kind of nice. We cover what we need to cover. Uh, everybody gets a chance to uh, to talk. We have altered the time because we uh, we wanted to make it accessible to people in the in Europe. Uh, and and every once in a while, people pull uh, uh, people stop in. Like last week, we had DB82, and DB82 has not been on for a long time. DB82 is out of um, Ireland. Uh, DB82 just popped in last week after not having been on for a long time. But we do have we do have some regulars from other European countries that pop in. Uh, Dar Dare Jacane. Uh, we haven't seen Dare Jacane in a while. It'd be nice to see him again or, or her. Um, and um, although I think if I remember correctly, he said uh, Dare is a male uh, pronoun. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, we moved it up so that we could get the Europeans in here. So uh, right now, two hours works for us. Uh, if you guys think you would, you'd like to go longer, let me know. Uh, some people might might say, Val, an hour of you is more than enough. You know, whatever. So, but yeah, we're, we're not. But but again, um, that's where that Matt does this for a living. That's that that's what Matt does for a living. And so sometimes I can understand the one who did two twelve hours because the longer you go, the you know the more money you can make. So I mean, like, uh, uh, don't get me wrong. Don't 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 assume that he does it because he wants to make money. He does it because he loves what he does. And he enjoys what he does, and he does a good job at it. But uh, but at the same time, he also have to pay the rent. Uh, Janice Yamanaka, Trippy Food are two of the sweetest, calmest food reviewers I know. Oh. So uh, so imagine that when we team up and we're on the same video, like wow! Thank you, uh, Food Taster TV. You're not so bad yourself. Uh, I, I I Food Taster. I would say like about for your channel. I love the enthusiasm you have. For what you're tasting, and you're very you're very uh, descriptive and emotion emotional about what you taste and everything, and so that's that's one of the things I enjoy about your uh, your channel, Food Taster. I think somebody donated to make it a 12-hour stream. Oh, so so they said, okay, uh, we're going to give you X number of dollars, but you have to do a 12-hour stream. Is that how that works? Pudding? Wow, that's that's crazy. I don't I don't know that I I don't know that I would be able to do that. I don't know that physically be able to do 12 hours like that. Because you're talking nonstop for 12 hours. It takes a toll on you. 12-hour um, Val stream, the people demand it. Well, apparently, as Pudding put it, um, the people will have to pay for it. But uh, but I don't see that happening. Maybe like six hours. Maybe it's six hours or something like that. But uh, had a fellow from New Zealand last week. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I did not notice, Tom, that you have uh, – now you have over 100. So what was it last week or the week before that you hit 100? Uh, so uh, congratulations, uh, everybody! Please congratulate Tom, old guy in Colorado, for hitting their 100 subscriber mark. So that's a, it's a milestone right there. All right, 
So I promised I would do something stupid. Let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, and this would be good for the people who have just kind of came in at the last at the last minute. So we have our melon um, melon bread from Tous La Jours, I think. Again, again, my French isn't so great. We have our melon bread. Um, we have our dandelion kimchi. I'm going to use the fork on this one because I'm building something. I'm not actually eating it. This is really good, though. I do recommend if you if you go to your local H Mart and you can find dandelion kimchi, I recommend it. It is a really unique taste. But there, we'll see how unique it is when – you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, kind of square that off. Oh, by the way, I opened this up and it's getting stale already. I can already feel it being stale, which is kind of weird that it would go stale that quickly. Because regular bread doesn't go stale that quickly. I don't know what it is. It's something about like uh, maybe um, maybe something like the sugar in it is crystallizing or something. I don't know. All right, now we also have our seasoned sliced squid by the cassandra are you leaving us where is that congrats tom party time i see that by the cassandra by drew oh drew horse is leaving uh drew uh you have a, a great rest of your day and thank you for joining us today it was fun having you here i think it was yeah i would say that i, I like this whole group it's a, it's a really great community i always enjoy these uh these episodes uh, so I, I have the, uh, my dandelion kimchi, and now let's put some of our um, seasoned sliced squid on there. This is like rubber spaghetti. This is probably not going to be too bad because everything here is savory. I mean, the bread is a little bit sweet. And our crispy Pollock skin chips. Let's put a couple of those. They look like dried anchovies. There we go. A little bit of everything. I think that's what we have. That's what we have. Okay. Cheers. Wait. Yep, that's all four. Okay. Something in there is not jiving. I think it's a sweetness from the bread that is not jiving with everything else. And for some reason, combining those things brings up the funkiness of the squid. Also not a good thing. I was under the mistaken impression that because everything was kind of similar that they would taste good together and i was completely wrong they don't taste good together they taste terrible together that's going to be a big thumbs down for me but you know you got to mix them up <clears throat> let's see if boba milk tea will kill that it helps this is really messy stuff here. So here's what I was going to do. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. You mentioned last stream or the stream before that you can tell the difference between the types of food the Mark stores sell based on the letter before it. What were the options again? Well, not necessarily the letter. So like 99 Ranch Market, um, uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese culture has a big thing with numbers. I think the number eight is a very lucky number. And so you see, see a lot of stuff at 88, 8, you know, uh, um, 8 is like a very lucky number in Chinese culture. Um, and so like a lot of Chinese places have a number in front of it. Um, as far as the uh, Korean stuff goes, um, um, H Mart is, um, um, I think it's like a, a letter and then a dash is, is that, that's typically a Korean thing. Uh, the Japanese don't. Uh, the Japanese stores generally don't do that. So your Japanese grocery stores are like Owajimaya or Mitsua Market. 
but they generally don't do that. I got like sticky stuff all over my hands. That was a mess. Um, uh, mit, uh, Japanese ones don't usually have numbers or a letter in front of it. So like Mitsuo Market um, or, um, or Wajimaya and stuff like that. So just the name. Um, and then um, the Vietnamese ones uh, are like, uh, they're different. So the only, the only big um, v Vietnamese uh, like grocery store or big, big market that I know of is uh, Finbon, which is a name. Again, it's a name. So I think the thing with uh, like a letter in front of it is Korean thing. Um, the number in front of it is a, a, usually a Chinese thing. Um, don't hold me to that. That's just an observation, but it might not actually, it might just be coincidence. So that's that. Add sardines. I could do that. I don't have sardines. I have some. Um, I have some anchovies. I could add to that, but we're only going to use. We're only going to add what we have. So it's just a, it's combining the things that we've already already tasted. But uh, thank you for the suggestion, John. Hey Dan, uh, a little late, but never never too late. It is. Uh, I I anytime I raise my voice, Doodle thinks I'm filming something, and when he thinks I'm filming something, he thinks there's food. So he's been pretty good pretty good uh, i will give him another snack another small piece of snack because he's been good uh, but um uh but dan you kind of missed everything but but it's okay it's always good to have you here and uh um and always uh you're always welcome in the room so how is life there little piece little piece for you and you're gonna take off fine um how is life on the farm dan uh hope things are well uh, glad to see you and always appreciate pre appreciative of your live streams. Literally just came in from outside work. Seems that that is always the case. Well, you, you're you on a farm. There's a lot of work to be done on a farm. Sardines and pretzels. Ooh, that sounds good. I don't have either, but sounds good. Um, let's see, did I miss anything? Imagine hearing someone 10 years ago say, my dog knows when I'm filming. I cannot imagine that from 10, uh, 10 years ago. Unless, unless they're like filming... A, you know, film, doing something with film, doing something with a film camera. Yeah, I can imagine that happening, but I, I can't imagine hearing it live. Let's put it that way. I would like to send you some sardines, Val. That would be nice, John, but um, sardines are like such a such a um, widely available thing that, um, that I, although I appreciate your offer, um, they're pretty common. So, uh, but thank you anyways, regardless uh, not too bad. My twin brother and parent, my parents planted flowers in the graves of our past loved ones for the upcoming Memorial Weekend. Oh, well, that's very nice. I need to do, I need to get a uh, Memorial Day episode together. Thank you for reminding me, Dan. I need to do that. Uh, sorry for the late. Oh, okay. You and Dan are talking. That's fine. All right. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I was hoping that Grub, rock, grub Warp, Grub Warp. I was hoping that Grub Warp was going to be able to join us because he had suggested something or asked me something, and and I wanted to cover that. Um, I could just keep on holding off on doing that, but I went out and I got the stuff. So, uh, so I'm going to do it here, and then just remind me if, like, say next week or something, that uh, Grub Warp jumps on. Remind me to remind him to go back and watch this this uh, live stream filmed because we're we're going to do his suggestion live. So basically. What he asked me was, have I tried spi spicy watermelon? And specifically what he was talking about is he's watermelon with tahine spice. Now, um, I have had uh, like the, the mango, mango with tahine spice on it because they, they basically put that spice on all kinds of fruits and stuff. Other things as well. But uh, but uh, I, uh, it's a big thing. That, like um, if you go to, uh, depending on what city you're in, of course, if you if you go to those carts, where they they chop up the fruit for you and everything, they'll usually sprinkle some of that on top of it. So the the key thing that makes that interesting is this, which is tahine. I, I believe I'm saying that right. I'm not completely sure. It is a Mexican name, tahine. It is actually a Mexican company. So to, uh, I'll I'll read what I prepared. Tahine was founded in Mexico in 1985 by Horacio Fernandez, producing a condiment consisting predominantly of chili peppers, lime, and salt. Now you can see that's a powder. Right. Tahine was originally created by Fernandez's grandmother, Mama Necha, as a sauce. Fernandez wanted to recreate the sauce in powder form so he could market to the world and was intent on developing a process to dehydrate the chilies and limes. Tahine entered the U.S. market in 1993. So basically, it is dehydrated 
a powder of um, uh, chili, lime, uh, chilies, lime, and salt. And again, if you've had the like uh, the the um, chili mango, same thing. It's the, the tahini powder. Um, it's it's pretty universal. You can find these in like regular grocery stores. You can find the tahini. Uh, and and again, I have had like off the carts uh, fruit with tahini on it, uh, and it had the the little packets with I, I guess it's like a dried mango with the tahini or the mango candy with the tahini on it, but I never had it with watermelon as uh, Grubwort had suggested. So we have watermelon today, and we have tahini, and we're going to put some of that on the watermelon and see how it is. So. Tahini is so good on watermelon, mango, and other fruits and veggies. Well, again, I, I haven't had it on watermelon, the Cassandra. So this is, we're trying this for the first time. So um, interesting. Does it have directions on how to make it back into a sauce? Well, no, no, it doesn't. But then again, if you're gonna if you're gonna make it into a sauce, just make a sauce, right? So just just take chilies and lime and salt and make it into a sauce, right? I, I wouldn't reconstitute this. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. Um, because it's it's probably uh, formulated to 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 be put on something dry, and if you add this to something to to liquefy it again, it might not work so much. So what I would do is I would see if you can find that original Mama Nature's uh, original recipe, and see if you can if you want to make the sauce. I would do it from scratch. I would not uh, I would not use the powder to make sauce. So that's just unless they have like a powder powder packet and they tell you. Let's see, maybe. Maybe there's uh, ingredients. I mean, uh, there's instructions on the back that tell you how to make make a sauce with it. Let's see. Um, nope, it's ingredients um, and uh, nutrition facts, but no uh, no instructions on how to make your sauce. So kind of on your own if you want to try it. But again, I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend that if you want to try to make that original sauce is to make it with fresh uh, or dried chili peppers, uh, lime, and salt. I would do that. But I don't know how, but I'll bet you, I'm, I'm willing to bet you'd be able to find a recipe for that. Val, have you heard of black diamond watermelons? I have not. Are they black or diamond shaped? I've not heard of black diamond watermelons. That's interesting. Okay, so before I make this and eat this, we will do another card. So the question is, this is interesting. The question is, what is the oldest soda in the world? So it's a soda that's still being sold today. What is the oldest soda in the world? Extra points if you can tell me who created it. Extra points if you can tell me what year it was created. And extra points if you can tell me where it was created. So, and it is not Coca-Cola. So that goes in the back burner. We turn the volume low and we get ready to sprinkle our tahine on our watermelon. So this should be interesting. The Cassandra says it's good. Not sure how much of this to put on. I look about right. Maybe. Putting power, I think you're probably incorrect. That's just me, though. Let me try to clean some of this up because this is a mess. I made a mess. And it is up to me to clean it up. All right, here we go. Pork, watermelon, and tahini. Pretty sure it's tahini. I don't think it's Cajun. Mm. Now, here's the thing about salt and watermelon. I've known this for a long time because I used to do this as a kid. If you put water, if you put salt on watermelon, it makes it sweeter for some bizarre reason. I don't know why that is, but something we've known as kids was that you put salt on watermelon, it makes it sweeter. So watermelon, watermelon is one of the few things that I actually put salt on. Actually does change the taste of the watermelon. Um, it doesn't make it sweeter. 
It makes it a little bit more sou sour, but I'm guessing that's because of the lime. Whatever sweetness is there is the watermelon itself. That is really interesting. It just totally changes the flavor of watermelon. I think the only thing about it that I'm not 100% crazy about is the sourness. Although, I want to say that I've had like uh, like watermelon lemonade, so it has lemon in it, and that it, it has that the uh, sourness or the tanginess from the lemon in it. This is just different because be, be, because of the combination of the lemon and the or the lime and the salt. Now, what I will tell you is that for me, the chili is a little bit light on this, so. I'm just getting a slight bit of spiciness towards the end. I'm not going to end up eating all of this. My parents used to put a pinch of salt in their Pepsi. I thought they were psychos. Amy, did they did they ever drink uh, Pepsi milk? Who saw our Pepsi milk re review? I think that was last week. The last week or the week before, we did Pepsi milk. So I thought that was an odd thing. It actually tastes pretty good. I've never done the garlic powder on it. Garlic powder on uh, on watermelon? That would be interesting. Does it make? Does it make it taste like that fake watermelon candy flavor? No, uh, food taster. It's a unique flavor, and it's really hard to describe. I'm going to kind of give that a thumbs in the middle. Um, maybe, maybe the, sp the, the the chili, the spice from the chili kind of gets mixed up in there so you don't have the same amount of concentration in every little bit of it. I kind of wish, because it's made with, we know it's made with chilies, that I kind of wish that it had more more of a chili kick to it, and it really doesn't. There's, there's a little bit on the finish. There's a little bit that goes through the throat. But other than that, there's not a, it's not as... It's not as spicy as some of the other like um, uh, like chili uh, um, chili mango and stuff like that. It's not as spicy as some of those ones. So I just kind of I'm gonna give it a thumbs in the middle only because I just kind of wish they kicked up the spice from the chilies a little bit. Um, the lime is a little bit weird because it adds that kind of sourness to it, but it's not like unheard of with watermelon. Like I said, if you've had like a a watermelon lemonade, you know those two those two flavors go pretty well together. And then the salt is like a thing that you would put on watermelon anyways so yeah thumbs in the middle maybe going up a little bit you know not a thumbs in the middle going downwards but the maybe thumbs in the middle uh i just i just wish you know they, they make they fo have a focus on the fact that it is um has a uh, chili in it and it just uh, i think they just need to kick the chili up a little bit so um, um i would assume that it all tastes the same because it's all made in very very large batches but it just could be that you know I, I don't know. Maybe I didn't put enough on it. I'm not sure, but I did get the saltiness and I did get the, I did get the uh, lemony flavor in it. So I don't know. Let's go back to well. Let's see if I missed anything in the meantime. Um, okay, people are talking to each other, which is cool. Uh, if you ever put salt on avocado, and Cassandra said salt, lemon, and garlic powder is great on avocado. Sure, I mean that you're essentially just making solid guacamole at that point. Um, I saw Pepsi Milk. What did you think, John, of Pepsi Milk? And have you tried it yourself? Uh, I don't think they have, but it does sound so strange. All right. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. So the question was, what is the oldest soda in the world? So let's see. We have um, Pudding Power said Mountain Dew Code Red. I'm sure that Pudding Power was joking. Uh, the Cassandra said Schweppes. John King said Dr. Pepper. Um, Rob Switch Review said Green River Soda. Uh, Janice Yamanaka said, Verner's Ginger Ale in 1866 by, in Michigan by James Verner. That's very specific. 
Uh, let's see. Was there any other ones? There wasn't. Oh, Tom just said kumquat soda. Uh, Tom, we know that's not, we know that the kumquat soda, the only kumquat soda that we've experienced is that Martian soda. Um, and um, and so that's a, that's going to be a big no. Uh, Peter Griffin said Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is old, uh, 1912, I believe. But not the oldest, um, but it is old, Peter. Um, let's see, uh, Dr. Pepper. Uh, John King said Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is old. It is from the uh, 1800s, the late 1800s. Uh, let's see, what were some of the other ones? Green River Soda. Uh, Rob said Green River Soda. I'm not sure about Green River Soda. I will have to check out Green River Soda. I have not heard about that. Uh, Janice was very specific. She said Verner's Ginger Ale in 1866 in Michigan by James Verner. Uh, that is a very old, and it is probably the oldest soda still made uh, in the United States. But the oldest in the world is the Cassandra is absolutely correct in Schweppes. It is Schweppes. So uh, Schweppes is probably more uh, famous for their ginger ale, but uh, Schweppes was created by jo John Johann Jacob Schwepp in 1783 in Geneva, Switzerland, and they are still producing sodas to this day. So Schweppes is, uh, I'm, um, I'm trying to remember, they used to have some old commercials on TV for Schweppes. It was like, it's the effervescence or something like that. There was um, the old Schweppes commercials and everything. You don't see it a lot. It's not like something people make a big deal out of, but it is the oldest soda in the world. It was originally made in 1783. So Schweppes is correct. And the Cassandra, 10 points for you, which don't go anywhere because we don't keep track of it. But uh, but the Cassandra got that absolutely correct. It is, in fact, Schweppes. Now, my question for you, Rob, is which one were you were you talking about? Were you talking about Verner's um, or were you talking about Green River Soda, uh, Rob? If you're still there, are you still there? Uh, yes, I tried it. Now it was really good. Oh, good, good. Okay, I think we we're talking about the Pepsi milk. I assume. I tried the vanilla coffee Coke. It was good. Amy, my preference was the um, the dark roast one. So it didn't have vanilla flavoring in it. I think the other one was car caramel. So um, if you watched, uh, we did uh, with reckless eating. We did uh, all three. And my preference was the dark roast because it was it was that Coca Cola Coca Cola flavor with that coffee flavor mixed together, but not anything else that makes it kind of crazy. So uh, the vanilla Coke was not was not one of my favorites. The dark roast was, but uh, I I I agree that I liked uh, the I liked the coffee cokes, the, all three of them. Uh, but again, the dark roast was my favorite. Green River Soda was created in 1919, which doesn't make it quite as old as even Coca Cola. Doesn't make it as old as Coca-Cola. Doesn't make it as old as Dr. Pepper. Doesn't make it as old as Werner's. Um, but it's still old. 1919. It's like 101, 102 years old. 102 years old. So it is still old. But uh, Rob, are you there, Rob? Rob, Rob is in the soundproof room. Are you there, Rob? Uh, Rob, uh, get back. Oh, hey, so late. We're a, we're like a minute before we're supposed to end. So uh, so you're gonna have to just kind of once it gets recorded, you're gonna have to watch it from the beginning. I'm so sorry that you missed it. The trips you are always welcome here, and you're always you always liven up the room when you come in. So uh, I am sorry that you that you missed most of it too. But I do appreciate you coming on and and letting us know that you decided to join us. So um, the trips I mentioned uh, channels uh, earlier. The trips uh, also have a great. Uh, YouTube channel. Uh, they do their live stream, I believe, on Fridays. Uh, I don't know if they always do it on Fridays, but I think most of the time they do their live stream on Fridays. So also check them out. Uh, looks like we're getting ready to end here. Oh, the actual Green River Soda. Uh, Rob, when you contact me later, let's talk about that one, okay? Um, and then maybe doing that one. Uh, here's playing <laughs> Call of Duty. Val, what is your email address? Val at trippyfood.com. Easy to remember, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. So the trips again. I it, it saddens me that you just came in, and we and we have to end things. And, and I'm so sorry that you missed everything. We had a very interesting uh, collection of items here, all that we purchased at the H Mart, with the exception of the watermelon tahini that we did afterwards. But regardless, <clears throat> I appreciate that. And um, and we're gonna call it here because we're like we're at 3:01 p.m. But I appreciate. I did answer the question, right? I did. I did with swaps. Schweppes. Okay, so we have more questions for, for next week and everything. We're back to our original kind of thing. Oh, 
I just I just got got an email pop up saying that uh, Reckless Eating just went live on Twitch. So they are live streaming today, but on Twitch. So again, I thank every one of you. It is good to it is good to see some of you uh, who I haven't seen in a while pop into the room. Um, the Cassandra, it's nice to have you back again. Um, and it was it, as always. It is I love interacting with you. I love this community. It's a great community. Be sure to support each other as well. Now, again, we have a lot of uh, people that are on the um, the chat that have their own channels and everything, and they're all great channels. I mean, I wouldn't just say that just to push their channels and everything. They're great channels, and I enjoy every single one of the channels, So it, the trips included. So please be sure to check out the, their channels. And again, if you go to uh, my the, the main Trippy Food page on YouTube, um, I know what is this? It's not subscribe channels. I can't remember what it was, but you'll see all the channels in there. So go in there, take a look at them, and check out uh, some of those channels. Uh, and even some new ones. Uh, the uh, Wander Wisely is a new. It's a brand new one. Uh, we met John Wisely uh, a couple of weeks ago when we were doing a, our road trip for uh, for the uh, We Go Main uh, Main Show, and um, and he's got a great sh uh, travel channel too. He's he does he's not been around for a long time, but is uh, for, for as, as far as travel stuff. Really, really great content. So check that out as well. So, uh, so again, appreciate all of you guys spending your Saturday afternoon with us, or your Saturday evening, uh, depending on where you're from. Really appreciate it. Uh, uh, love the camaraderie. Uh, love the uh, the interaction with this community. It's a, it's a great community, and and I just I love doing this thing for you, and and uh, I love doing it myself. So uh, so I thank you all. And I hope to see you all again soon. Uh, we'll do the same bat time, same bat channel next week, uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances. And other than that, uh, please take care of yourselves. Please take others, take care of others. And we will see you soon. Goodbye, everybody.